Rewatch there five. is a moment in two that is my favorite probably effect of everything, which is when, <laughs> when John McClane ejects himself from the cock. Yes! Comes yes! The Classic. It's so great. Classic. Like, yeah. I love that. It's like, no, it really is like one of those classic action shots. Like, yeah. I've seen that shit in, like, Fox celebratory videos, like, celebrating 100 years of Fox. They use that shot. Like, really? It's an iconic shot. Yeah. Tell, to tell me if you like the world, uh, not the people. I like I mean, the essence of the world, but not the world itself. You like its organizations, its, uh, its advertising factotums, its automobiles, its assembly line like souls. Lady. It's bad. Well, it's silly. Let, let's, let's remove it. Huh? But it feeds me and brings me cans of pork and beans. Happy holidays and welcome to another rendition of the Holy Goof series sit down. We are your Holy Goofs. I'm Spencer. I'm Josh. I'm Brett. He's Brett. Uh, for this Holy Goof series sit down to keep in the festive nature, we are going to talk about the best Christmas movie ever made, which is Die. And it's four sequels. <laughs> that's right. And I have a little... Ornament. Oh, that's great! Oh, that. To oh, that's celebrate cool. the Let occasion, close, we'll have a few laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> so yeah, um, the Die Hard franchise, not just the first Die Hard. That's right. Um, that's right. That's right. That's right. Which consists of five films: Die Hard, Die Hard Two, Die Hard with a Vengeance, Live Free or Die Hard, A Good Day to Die Hard. We're gonna sit down, talk about series during our Holy Good series sit downs. Uh, we usually go mm-hmm. on a theme here. We break them down in different categories. We start off with Uncommon Place. Mad ones, kill your darlings for damn kicks, and then we wrap it up with a nice quote and a Christmas bow for you. So we nice. can start off. Also, check us out. We just started a Twitch stream every Thursday. We are going to be on Twitch, twitch.com right. slash the holy goof. Correct, Josh? Yeah, that's right. The holy goofs. Yep. And of course, always go to plural, our plural. <laughs> and of course, always go to our website, theholygoof.com. We're featuring mad ones. We're doing articles, all that good stuff. Spotify playlists. Go check us out. But now let's get into yep. Die Hard, uh, Uncommon Place. Josh, you want to start us up? Um, yeah. Okay. So Uncommon Place. Normally in an action movie, you have the witty banter. You know what I mean? You have the action movie lines, right? This is one of the few action series I could think of where the witty banter is actually good. Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. No fucking shit, lady! Do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? There are rules for policemen. Yeah. That's what my captain keeps telling me. Next time you have a chance to kill someone, don't hesitate. Thanks for the advice. That's my uncommon place witty banter. You know, love, love, it. You love John McClane as he talks to himself as he uh, shoots people in the head, though. <laughs> <laughs> yep. especially in yep. the first one. Um, my uncommon place is, is kind of a, a traditional one in a sense where uh, not only is Die Hard a Christmas movie, you a Merry Christmas, it's Christmas Eve, you got any Christmas music, Merry Christmas. I didn't realize they celebrated Christmas in Japan, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Christmas Eve. It was the night before Christmas. It's Christmas, Theo. It's Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, this is their idea of Christmas. I gotta be here for New Year. Christmas references are brought up all through until I think Live Free or Die Hard. Yes. Yeah. Then I don't think they're Yes, already... and then that one that one is a um it's a fourth of July movie. <laughs> right, right. It's an Independence <laughs> Day. He says happy July Independence movie. Day. They still they still make it about a holiday. It's <laughs> yeah. just, you know. Yes. But yeah. the first three, so a different one. the first three are definitely, definitely Christmas. Um, Do they bring up Christmas in three? I can't, I couldn't remember if they did. They have one line, but I can't for life me remember what it is. Maybe in post we can. can yeah, I'll that. add it. I'll add but, it in post. But in there... third, there is a line or okay. two. It's Christmas. You could steal City Hall. Not only, right. not only is it a Christmas movie. I did, I found an article that says that it's actually a stealth retelling of It's a Wonderful Life, the first one. Where, <laughs> where McLean is jo- George Bailey, right? Seeing what life would be without him in the beginning as he goes to Nakatomi Plaza. He's fresh oh, off wow. a divorce. He's seeing his wife raise up 
into this new company. His children, um, he's he's fighting for custody for his children. They're they're with a babysitter. He's seeing life without him improving, whereas George Bailey's is is actually declining his life and wonderful life. It's not better; it's worse without him. But George, I mean, not George, but Bruce, John finds out what he's actually really needed for, what he's good at, is shooting people in the face. Right. <laughs> right. And, right. He doesn't provide value to his community by no, being a great guy. But he's, he's needed. Just, he's needed. He's needed. <laughs> Al Powell. <laughs> Al Powell, the cop, is Clarence's guardian oh, angel. Wow. Um, oh, okay. he's great. We, we can talk about he's how so he's also a child murderer, but they kind of breeze past that point. <laughs> where, he's a cop. He's a, probably a bad guy. <laughs> he, 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 shot, he, probably sh- a bad guy. he shot a kid. That's why he's working the desk. Um, yeah. Oh, that's right. But... That's right. I remember a gag where they make fun of that in Loaded Weapon One. <laughs> but but the best part Samuel of that to me, Jackson, he it's not that he was placed on like administrative leave or whatever, and so he had to work the desk. He chose the the yeah. force was happy happy to send him back out into the field, but he was like, I can't. I need to ride the desk. At least he has some kind of <laughs> yeah. moral center. Yes, yes. He yeah, does. exactly. Al, Al is Clarence. He is um. John's spirit guide through this whole affair. He's his guardian angel. Um, he's yeah. talking him through what's going on the whole time, what's going on um, outside. And they're having this exchange very similar to George and Clarence. And then finally, Hans Gruber, of okay. course, is Mr. Potter. Not much similarities here aside from point that the point that they're both assholes. Um, <laughs> but... They, both antagonists. Both antagonists. And they both ex- expose uh, fundamental problems with the capitalistic <laughs> financial structure, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, John, there you go. They're both world-class scumbags. Yeah, it so yeah. it's a it's a stealth retelling of It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. Um, not only I like that. a Christmas movie. That's the un- my uncommon. That's such a stretch, All but right. I accept it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, <laughs> head, it's headcanon. It's a stretch, but it's headcanon now. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. And you want to move on to Madeline, shall we? Or did well, Brett? Brett's got to do. Oh, Brett! Brett, Brett you had, uh, for some reason you I thought you did yours. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I thought I had to cut me out. Brett, go, please, go forth no. and tell us what is so, uncommon about this film. So my uncommon uh, place about the franchise, franchise is every single one of them, except for Good Day to Die Hard was not originally a Die Hard film. They all got adapted from something, except for Five, which Five is the only Die Hard movie that was specifically written to be a Die Hard sequel. I think that might be why it's the weakest one. But the original film is based on a book called Nothing Lasts Forever, written by a former cop, uh, Roderick Thorpe. Mm -hmm. Uh, It got turned into a film called The Detective with uh, Frank Sinatra, and also The Life of Roderick... Yep. And then the life of Roderick Thorpe actually also influenced both Bullet and Dirty Harry. Wow. So this guy is like, he's a really famous cop that got a lot of different adaptations of like different elements and cases he worked on and like exaggerating him as a, as a person. So this got adapted. Uh, the original Die Hard is loosely based on the book Nothing Lasts Forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second film is also based on a novel called 58 Minutes. Um, it's fairly similar but it's not exactly the same instead of his wife being overhead it's like his daughter and stuff Mm -hmm. um and then the third movie initially started off as a steven seagal film uh, gonna be set on a (laughs) boat and gonna be set on a boat and then speed two came out cruise control and they were like oh so then they ended up like changing things around and then turning it into die hard with a vengeance um, and then Die Hard 4, Live Free or Die Hard, is based on, well, it was influenced uh, by an earlier script titled WW3.com combined with uh, a magazine article entitled A Farewell to Arms that was basically talking about how vulnerable the um, the economic and electronic banking system is hmm. and that if someone wanted to do essentially what Timothy Oliphant does in that movie, like they could. And so then they were like, hey, let's make that a Die Hard movie. Mm-hmm. So like all of the Die Hard movies started as something else and then got transformed into a sequel by putting John McClane and his personality in there. Mm-hmm. Except for 5, which was like, all right, Die Hard 4 did really, really well. Let's write Die Hard 5. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, I so, love that. That's but I thought so that was interesting. Kind of interesting. Yeah, very yeah. interesting. That's great. Not all the same author, right? Different books, different authors. No, no, okay. no different books and articles and different things. Okay. But yeah, it's just injecting John McClane into it <laughs> makes it die hard. That's, mm-hmm. I, that's yeah, great. essentially. I love that. I I I, lo- I knew the first one was, but that's really interesting. They were they didn't they were like let's just find another action book and throw John McClane in it. I think they should they could do that mm-hmm. forever. Let's move on to Mad Ones. We just pick a character out of the, this franchise that uh, stood out to us. Um, we give them the MVP of the entire franchise for, you know, could be director, could be um, casting crew, whatever it is. Um, Josh, you want to go? Yeah. So I'm breaking from the norm, which is this is normally where I just use it to shout out like the uh, the crew, like either the CGI department or something along those lines. Not doing that this Tech time. Portions, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, which are all fantastic. I mean, it does deserve a shout out that like practical effects rule these movies and they're so good because the explosions yes. are amazing and they're incredible. And the stunts are like wild. Like you see some of the stuff that they have stuntmen do swinging off wires and stuff. It's like, how did you, wow. Somebody yeah. died making the this. The shit with the semi truck in the fourth movie oh, uh, at the end the j- is like insane. The jet yeah. on the highway. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and four. yeah, none of that. <laughs> none of that is actually my mad ones. My mad ones are the villains of these movies because, first of all, the actors you have Alan Rickman, Jeremy Irons, Timothy Oliphant, um, and they're they all their motivation feels it. They're great villains in the sense that like their motivation for most of them, I think for me personally, two stands out uh, as not really fitting this mold, but the rest of them do in that the motivation of the villains kind of makes sense, even though what they're espousing is not their true intentions. You know what I mean? So they always set like, something up. Because two's, like two's like they're trying to break out that dictator and, yeah. and set him off for political asylum or something like that. Yeah, exactly. So and it's a little more And that general goes rogue. Yeah. Yeah. It's but weird. the rest of them have this twist built in where you think you understand the villain's motivation and it actually feels almost noble. Like you can kind of get with it. You're like, yeah, I agree with this. But then, of course, Anarchy. that's not their true intention. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Especially right. three. I love that yes. turn in three where you're like you think it's this like he's using this whole thing of the personal connection of like you killed my brother mm-hmm. but it's all just like he doesn't greed. Care. you know your brother was an asshole <laughs> hey, uh, he really he was, was an asshole he was an asshole you you got his number all right spence what you got yeah that mine is um another an, a counterpart to John McClane. It's Samuel Jackson as Zeus Carver. Guy back there called you Hey Zeus. He didn't say Hey Zeus. He said Hey Zeus. My name is Zeus. Zeus? Yeah, Zeus. As in Father of Apollo, Mount Olympus. Don't fuck with me or I'll shove a lightning bolt up your ass. Zeus! You got a problem with that? No. He's my mad one of this franchise because, I mean, the motherfucker just dominates movies when he's on screen. And I think, (laughs) I think without him, I think he, I think he saved the franchise after what I thought was the worst film, the second one. Uh, I think Ooh, I think that it. without him making, without him um, attributing to that the third one's success and how good it was, they would have stopped there. Yep. It was mm. it was so good. Like three is a diehard movie for sure. It's it's three is it's good. excellent. Three is and I think Sam Samuel Jackson just totally makes that film what it is. You and I I, I also believe that they abandoned the witty black sidekick role that they had and and, <laughs> that can, that and the first one it. and the first <laughs> one and i was in the second one but on the phone mm-hmm. briefly and then I was in the sec- yep. sam yeah. is in the third one and then they completely brand abandoned the witty black sidekick that was keeping john humble let's get something else straight you need me a lot more than i need you yeah. so yeah samuel jackson that's that that's my mad one samuel jackson he's Sam Samuel. Well, my mad one, that's actually a really great lead into my mad one, because my mad one is the dude who picks up the baton from Samuel Jackson, and that is motherfucking Justin Long. <laughs> oh, you live for yeah, your yeah, diehard. Yeah. He does. Who is like so, he's so surprisingly good in that movie, <laughs> because you think he's just there to like annoy John and be the new witty like banter psychic. Comic and he relief. is. He yeah, is. Comic relief. But he like he not only genuinely actually like contributes and has a good arc of him like growing a pair of balls listen to me listen to me ma'am what is your name dolores dolores okay dolores uh i don't know if you have a dad 
But I do, and I want to be able to say that a year from now, okay? Because my dad is my hero, and right now he is in my arms, dying. And, and, and his only hope is to get to a hospital right now. I, we can't wait, so please start the goddamn car. <sighs> Thank you, Dolores. Also, I think the way Justin Long plays that character, too, is, like, there's just enough of an actual realism and, like like sincerity to it where like he doesn't feel like an actual caricature like he feels real yeah he feels like a real dude and uh like he just adds that little extra bit of humanity to it mm -hmm. i totally um, agree well let's kill some darlings right. let's we're getting rid let's of something that we hold dearly but could be switched up or completely scrapped from the movie um based on going back looking back in retrospect what could be removed right um this is tough for me but josh you're going first thank you <laughs> yeah mine was tough too i had to just go very basic and just put an entire movie on the chopping block because it's hard for yeah. me to, to find something in totality so i oh. you guys are gonna hate me i went with two um mm. and i know that's crazy because the the last one is like maybe the weakest entry but it benefits from being modern, so there's a lot of really cool effects and stuff that I love. Like, in terms of which one would I go back and rewatch again today <clears throat> after just having watched it? Probably the last one just because of the spectacle of it. Oh, man. I know. That's funny because I actually think reverse for the exact same reasons. Right. <laughs> I like the Fair. charm of the old effects. Yeah. And I would definitely have rewatched two there more is than a, I would rewatch There five. is a moment in two that is my favorite probably effect of everything which is when <laughs> john mcclain ejects himself from the cock yes yes the classic it's so great classic like, yeah. i love that it's like no it really is like one of those classic action shots like yeah. i've seen that shit in like fox celebratory videos like celebrating 100 years of fox they use that shot like really it's an iconic shot yeah wow. it's like it's so great because it's like it's aged very oddly but mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's definitely like, green screen, but the way they do it is actually like pretty impressive. They track them the whole time. But I'm I'm ki I'm killing two just because I'm I'm least likely to thing. watch that one again. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there there is an aspect of Kill Your Darlings where we like to kill at least one movie. Uh, Josh, that's to me that's that's an easy one for me because of course it would be two. I wow. <laughs> it's the weakest one. If I if I had to kill any movie, yeah, for sure. They went from very simple and they did a lot in two. I think they just got full of themselves a bit or like, let's just make this even crazier, but it should be, keep it limited. It's a little convoluted. Don't, yeah. don't convolute I would plot. be very interested to see if the novel it's based on is that twisty. Yeah. Or if right. they like changed There's things. Like, you know, when you said it was a novel, that makes sense to me because if I could track everything mm -hmm. as I'm reading it, like I, I feel like that type of plot works really well in a, in a yeah, book. Maybe that was what, what it was. Is yeah. it, that was part of the novel plot. Totally. You have the journalists in the airplane. You have they're taking down one. They're taking down oh airplanes. They're they're doing so much. I didn't understand what's going on for like the first maybe forty five minutes of that movie, and then mm -hmm. and then I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess I I get it now. But anyway, my darling, I'm gonna kill. Um, is I I tried to pick something that everyone loves <laughs> and that I love, and not not kill. I, I kill a specific aspect of it, not the, the whole thing itself. So I, okay. I zeroed in on Hans Gruber, right? What? He's <gasps> perfect. He's perfect. I'm not killing him. But I'm like, what could be changed? And then the perfect thing is alter his death scene in the first one so that he doesn't die and he lives and we can see Alan Rickman again. And then the second one or third one, whatever it is, whatever it is, maybe replace his brother in the third one with him so he doesn't actually oh, die in the first one. And he kind of like maybe holds on to it. I don't know. But change the death scene in it, even though it's you iconic, want, want and have him survive. I, I would love to see Hans like again. Alan that much, yeah. And that is a darling love because Alan. that is. I'm like, not killing him, but I'm killing a good scene. It's the most scene. iconic death, death scene. Death scene is so good. It's yeah. really good. But I, I you want to see it's him. So you want to see him again. You, you think that, like, yeah, you know, you him showing up again in the third one instead of his brother would be awesome. But yeah, that's my darling. Just for another shot yeah. to hear him uh, fake an American accent, yeah. right, right. which is my favorite part. <laughs> Chuck, how are you doing? Oh. Please, God, no. Please, <laughs> no, please, no, stop. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, God. All right, so what, 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 I'm killing a darling. Um, It's five. Okay. Five. Like, mm. come on. This it's is fair. Just, I don't know, like. 
Five, to me, there's a charm to two. It may be the weakest besides five, but there's a charm to it. Um, I do love having Al back. I love the fucking reporter from the first one that comes back, and he's just, like, even more of, like, a slimy (laughs) asshole. And I love getting him, like, get seeing him get, like, pepper sprayed or whatever yes, happens. Yeah. So he gets, like, kneed in the nuts or something. I think, it's I think he's tased. Um, tased or something. Does he get tased? Like, oh, One yeah. of those things. Yeah. He's in the airplane, it's like. So he's just... Just... Yeah, because the old lady that's, like, sitting next to um, <laughs> McLean's wife, like, has a taser. She's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's just, there's a charm to two that I think is part of why I enjoy, it, even though it, it is, like, one of the weakest entries. Um, and I think that, um, it has an energy to it. Oh, fucking Deep Blue Sea. Rennie Harlan also directed Deep Blue Sea. Love that movie. That's like another... I don't think I've seen Deep Blue Sea. Head is like, oh my god! My head is like a Sharks fan. Oh my god. I don't think yeah, I've seen man. that. Yeah, <laughs> man. Ice Cube. Samuel Jackson, LL Cool Samuel J. Samuel Jackson. Uh, or, uh, yeah, it's LL Cool J, not yeah, Ice Cube. Yeah, cool and J. Thomas Jane, before he was Punisher. Got wow, oh, I gotta check this out. Anywho, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I like, I think Rennie Harlan has good energy as a director, and that's what I like about two. But like four, I just like, I don't know. There's something about four that just like it, it lacks. I think it's it's the one that lacks the most soul. It, ha- it has some really good action sequences. The whole truck chase sequence, it, like halfway through the movie, is fucking awesome. Yeah. There's some good, oh, like John yeah. Moore is does some good action stuff, mm-hmm. but like John just feels like. Like I don't know, like he's on autopilot in that movie. Yeah, I could, I can and agree. That's my he's biggest on vacation. Issue with it. So he's it's on like, vacation. I can agree. <laughs> so he's on vacation. That's why. <laughs> like, that, so yeah. So yeah, I would cut. I would cut five. That would be the darling. I would cut, and I would because four is like, you brought it back. You made I it awesome. Four. End it there. Like end it on a high note. Not not five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Can we, can we bring some attention to one of the best moments, too, in three, where the train explodes and it comes on the uh, station in the, in, in oh, the third one? Yes. For the, that, scene, that shot for the for that time the was amazing. Across it the whole it yes. just splits in half yes. and comes. And there's also a correlation between Samuel Jackson yep. in that movie and Frozone in The Incredibles, where he's like, Oh, that's yep. right. I'm yes. reaching yeah. in my pocket. Okay, so uh, let's do some for damn kicks, shall we? Where we add a little, for s- damn kicks. little seasoning, a little spice to uh, the franchise. Add whatever we want to make it uh, more up to our liking. Uh, Josh, you want to go first? Yeah, okay. So mine is uh, maybe potentially a little controversial because John McClane is... I might say it. He might be the best action hero of all times, just in the sense of being a traditional action hero. Yes. Um, he has his sense of ethics, he has his ethos, and he sticks to it. He doesn't waver, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But if I was going to add one thing to the franchises, I would like to see him maybe be a little conflicted over what I was touching on before with the villains. They always seem at first to have something you could actually relate to. I'd like to see mm-hmm. McLean maybe have some conflict over like, uh, you know, stopping these people where it's like, oh, you know, maybe he has a point. Maybe this guy... Maybe this guy, and then have a turn where you find out that's not even the guy's motivation yeah. anyway. You know, could be a little you fun. Just want, you want John to get suckered in a little bit, a li- just a little bit, just be a little fallible. <laughs> Josh, you just like characters who are in these gray areas, so you want yeah, you want John it's a hundred percent right. So like, that's 100% just battle right. with good and evil. <laughs> I feel I personally when I see like uh, an unchallenged moral compass. I go like, oh, come on. Not, give me not a little, realistic. Give me a little conflict, internal conflict. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, for my damn cakes, I just want simple. Every Die Hard movie should resemble the first, as in Bruce Willis should just be in one place shooting bad guys. Everyone oh. should be Bruce Willis or John McClane on an airplane. John McClane on a cruise ship. I'm playing on an island. <laughs> Give me Predator, essentially, like Die Hard was, just like him in a building taking right. on baddies. Don't overcomplicate it with plot. I felt like that was like what took me away from like what was such a great, simple first movie. And they sort of got back to it in the third, although the third was a little complicated. Just put him in one yeah. place and have him infiltrate in enemy lines by himself. Like, uh, Well, if you notice, each film expands his like horizon. So the first one's a building. Mm-hmm. Second one's an airport. Third one's a city. 
Fourth one's the entire East Lake yeah. coast. And then the fifth one, we're going, we're not even in America. We're going to a different yeah. country. Yeah. yeah. It's like He's each on one takes a step further. I'm on yeah. yeah. I, God, I, I hated how they just reused that same audio clip. I'm on Those were my issues with five. Yeah. It was just, it was obvious. It was like, it wasn't even a second take. It was just <laughs> obviously the same exact take. And they used it like four or five times. And I was like, gee. I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation. No, I, I think. Do the exact opposite of that and keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple it like the first one. I mean, John McClane fighting enemies on a cruise. Like he he's that literally kind of on vacation. Yeah. I'm on vacation. And they come on the cruise ship and he's going from <laughs> he's going he's in his swim trunks. He's going yeah. from like ship like ship. That'd be ship. so good. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so good. That's yeah. mine. Just make it simple. Yeah. Do- my my for damn kicks, I mean, I think well, it's like look. Ever since five came out, I have been like itching for them to do a sixth one. And like mm-hmm. at one point, Len Wiseman was attached to come back and direct, and they were working on a script that took influence from a graphic novel prequel that was going to do a wraparound story where you had Bruce Willis coming back as older John McClane, but then you cast a younger dude playing him and pull a Godfather Part Two where you like yeah. flashback, and it was going to be something to the effect of like. The, the villain from one of his earliest cases is like now come back for him or something yeah and like i just i really wanted that franchise to go out on a high note sadly because of bruce willis's condition and everything i don't think we will ever get that no. which is heartbreaking no. and it's it's extra sad learning that like this is kind of the the reason like in all honesty some of his later films suffered in quality and stuff and now you kind of like look back and you go oh it's because he's fighting this like illness at the same time and that takes so much out of a person yeah Yeah. and stuff um so i think i think the best way to go about it would be a six movie but yeah do like basically commit to the prequel because john mcclane like bruce willis will always be john mcclane and i think that there is something inherently wrong with rebooting die hard Hmm. but if you want to do a final film about like some of his earlier days and get away with it that way i would totally be totally be okay with that because it would give us one final movie that's like hopefully good Mm -hmm. um maybe he would come back like even digitally they could like do something where he is there for even just a little bit yeah like but just give us like one final good die hard story yeah that's a great because I remember hearing – I'm so glad you brought that up because that was almost my for damn kicks is the prequel thing. But my, my issue what, with it was that of like, well, so what? You're just going to recast him? But I love that way of doing it of, of like a Godfather thing where it's like you flashing in between. Yeah. Let's um let's get to some quotes. Let's wrap it up with some quotes. Some quotes. Josh, you want to go first? I'm going to go first. Now, despite this probably being the weakest entry, I'm going to pick a quote from Five – because it's just such a funny line to me. I love it so much. It stood out when it happened uh, <laughs> where John McClane is like, he's like basically calling his son like a pussy for being like a spy. He's like, what do you say? I've got a spy. And then he calls him the 007 of Plainfield, New Jersey. The 007 of Plainfield, New Jersey. Yeah. I, I, love, I love that line. It's like, it's such a, it's such a dig at his own kid. And it's, it's also like, he's just such a true boot cop that he's like, what is it? What is all this black what ops shit? Like, what's yeah. 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 What are you, some kind of spy? Mm-hmm. What, you put on your little twinkly toe spy shoes and do spy stuff? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, I'm gonna go for. Right, I'm gonna go for uh, the third one, and it's a quote from the man himself, Samuel Jackson, as Zeus. I'm not gonna do it in his voice because I'll butcher it. But he says, "Yeah, Zeus, as in, yeah, Zeus, as in father of Apollo, Mount Olympus. Don't fuck with me, or I'll shove a lightning bolt up your ass." Zeus, you got a problem with that? Well, the man, yeah, great. the man. It's great. great movie, although it had one of the strangest. Um, I don't know where most racist scenes I've seen in my entire life. I oh! Thought oh. Thought Dial 911. Tell the police to get up here quick. Somebody's about to get killed. Anyway, go ahead, Brad. Your quote. Yeah. Um, mine, mine's a quote from the first one. Um, and it's a, it's a quote from Alan Rickman. The resp- Bruce Willis's response is has become the uh, the iconic line of the franchise, but I'm actually going to highlight the line that um uh 
brings us that famous quote, which is when Alan Rickman says, Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? It like so perfectly encapsulates the Die Hard franchise and John McClane as a character, which like he is the modern cowboy. Yep. It's a modern like Western. Like that's like in in terms of like what the genre did. Right. Like the genre, the Western genre took over. And then like once Die Hard hit, that was how you fucking made action movies from right. then on. Yeah. Like it influenced so much. Mm -hmm. And we have so many other like great action movies to thank because of Die Hard and stuff. And it's because of this idea of like a modern dude still thinking he's a cowboy and he can take on the bad guys. Absolutely. And like being like the only man for the job, wrong place, wrong time, but fuck it, man. Yeah. I guess it's gotta be me. I gotta like, do it. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. And, and he really is such a Western. Like he says like, no, I'm more of a Roy Rogers and they have like Westerns playing on the TVs and stuff. Like he, it clearly is yeah. like, no, he is a Western hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, totally. I love his commitment to usually this would be extremely cheesy after maybe the third movie. Like, but for some reason, you, you're actually rooting for him and can't wait for him to say, because, hey, motherfucker. Yeah. Yes. You know, you're like, when yes. is he going to say? When is he going to say? You, you, like, usually you get that fatigue yep. of like this, this thing, you know, okay, that's over. Yeah, but it's like every time he says it, you're like, yeah. you're like, you're like, yeah. you because, hey, motherfucker. You because, hey, motherfucker. You because, hey, motherfucker. Yippee Kaye, motherfucker! Yippee Kaye, motherfucker! Well, thank you for joining another series sit down from the Holy Goofs. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your ha holidays. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Happy holidays, everybody. Have a happy new year. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. And as always, thank you. Goofers be goofing! Goofers be goofing. Goofers be goofing. Hey. Peace out, everybody. Peace. I was kind of hoping for a yippee ki mother goober, but it only it only occurred to me at the Damn it. second. <laughs>